Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another course vlog. This is round two out here. We're back out at Industry Hills, the Eisenhower course. This is a beautiful track out here just outside of Los Angeles. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you back here week after week. And here we go with hole number 10. Starting right off next to the clubhouse, next to the 18th green and the first tee as well. Number 10 is going to be heading severely down the hill, especially on the second shot. Now off the tee, there's bunkers on both sides of the fairway, and especially that one on the right-hand side is going to come into play. Pinched fairway here as we head over the crest, and it's really giving you a narrow aiming area. It's completely blind unless you're about five yards from the edge of the hill. Send it on down and short of the lake here. Unless, of course, you have an angle and a shot at it, then, of course, you can go for the green in two. But today, we're just trying to feather this one right down the middle. Now, as you can tell by my body language here and the direction of this shot, it has been a difficult day so far, and it's probably going to continue for a little while here. Now, just going to chip out this 9-iron, trying to get it down and over the crest of that hill. If you do, it'll kick down 50 to 60 yards, but I hit it through the fairway, and it was here on a downhill lie in the rough. A very difficult shot heading into the green, and of course, I just caught it too much over the green and into one of the back bunkers. This is a dangerous and very slippery bunker shot here, just landing it over the lip of the bunker there and letting it trickle all the way down to the hole on this multi-tiered green. This is on the lowest level here, and luckily this is an uphill putt for par. I'm shocked. One of the best fives I've made in a very long time. Let's go on to the drivable par for 11th here. 333 yards from the tips. It's not much shorter from the blues of the whites. All the tees are clustered there in one area. Straight up the hill until you hit this tree and these pair of bunkers on the right. That is the top of the crest. It's all the way blind up there. You can't see the second bunker off the tee, nor can you see the green. Send it on up, and this is a heavily protected green. Six bunkers all the way around it makes me never ever want to go for it i mean there's just no reward to being right next to this green and with with it being blind there's just no chance i should get it up there so i'm just going to hit a three wood here off the tee trying to lay it back for a nice three quarter sandwich into this tucked left flag i skied it just a bit again and i'm over the flag again another slippery chip shot here down the hill and as you see it just rolls all the way out these greens are treacherous, and today the greenskeeper decided to wake up on the wrong side of the bed and give us some devilish hole locations. Just wait until you see number 13. But first, we're going to have the par 4 12th and the most difficult hole as it's rated here on the back 9. A very long uphill drive is going to be cresting over these two bunkers. It's blind over the crest from the tee, but if you can get your ball over those bunkers, it will catch a slot and sometimes kick down another 50 yards down to the bottom of the hill. Now from the bottom of the hill, the green is blind back up the hill, snaking up and down the whole way. Now this drive, I just tugged it a little bit, but this is one of the wider landing areas and it does funnel down a little bit down here. This is a perfect pitching wedge number for me, a nice 145 numbers for my pitching wedge. Up the hill that was adjusted and here it is right underneath the hole for a very makeable birdie chance. Man, I really want to get that stroke back from the last hole after playing number 11 sloppy. But it is what it is, a par on the most difficult hole. And here to lucky number 13, heading back down the hill. Another six bunkers completely surrounds this hole. And yes, look at that hole location on the front little tongue.
Now I flush this seven iron. It was heading right at the flag, but with a little bit of wind behind us, it flew long onto the back of the green, and that was not ideal, as you're gonna see how fast this putt is heading down the slope. I mean, not only is this on a tiny little finger of green, it's a terribly sloping little finger, and a beautiful three putt bogey is gonna send us on to apparently the easiest hole number 14. But I don't think this course was rated from the black tees because as we swoop in here, you see next to the par three 13th green, boom, there's a black tee box way back there that you're gonna have to shoot the gap and fly the extra 100 yards all the way down to the fairway. Yes, this is 462 from the blacks and it's 363 from the blues. Now, that ferry bunker on the left is going to come into play for almost everybody on this hole, myself included. I'm gonna have to catch this shot. This hole plays entirely uphill, and once you get up there to this blind green, you can see the tiers here as we fly in. Those are about a foot to foot and a half tall. Wicked, wicked slopes. Now, luckily the cut was working for me today off the tee, I aimed a little left and let it go a little right, just down Main Street and on the right-hand side here, but this was into the wind and uphill. Had to club up here to a five iron, hit it flush, and hoping to get it up onto the right level on this multi-tiered green. In the end, it was close enough. Right here on the fringe, just had to bump it up a tier, and you know what? There's really no up or downhill putts once you're up on those tiers. They are relatively flat. So this is a very makeable eight foot par putt. And we're just gonna ride that bogey train on into the 15th hole. And I think this is their replica of the 12th at Augusta. It plays a very similar distance to a very similar angled green over water. And today we get to face another gnarly hole location tucked all the way in the back right. Now I clubbed up to my 200 yard six iron here because this was playing straight into the breeze and I just wanted to chip one underneath it and keep it on the green. I hit a golf shot and did keep it on the green, had a nice 25 foot look here for birdie. Sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. Isn't that just golf? You hit a very random shot into the green and an unexpected 30 footer rolls in for your first birdie of the day. Now here on number 16, straight off the tee, the fairway is gonna end at about 275 yards. All those bunkers protecting your drive. And if you're lucky, you can get one around the corner here Past that bunker, it is gonna be a downhill slope and then back up into this green. If you lay back in the first half of the fairway, it is level with the green, but if you go further, it's gonna be going down the hill. Now, naturally, I've been hitting a cut all day and coming off a of birdie, I was feeling really good. So I took out my old Arnold Palmer swing and tried to hit a big old slice. Mission accomplished, hit the hill, all the way on down next to the green. Just a simple little 50 yard chip shot here up and onto the green. And I hit this one close, giving myself another very makeable birdie chance. And this back nine is actually starting to salvage my entire round. But I just couldn't get that putt to drop. Oh my gosh. How many putts are we missing on this channel? That is obviously my weakest part of my game. I got a putting green here in my garage. I do practice, but I just can't get him to roll in all the time. Now, number 17, make sure you head up to the black tee way up on top of the hill. It doesn't play much further, and it's a big downhill tee shot to this uphill fairway. Yes, as soon as you get in front of the tee box, it's the bottom of the hill, and then we're going all the way back up to this green. Choose your distance properly off the tee and you'll miss all the bunkers that are included. And it's gonna be another blind green. Luckily, the whole location is in the center.
Now, I was still feeling very confident with the driver, so I aired it out once again, was able to hit it right down Main Street and just before the greenside bunker. Another 50-yard chip shot just up and over the sand trap here onto the green, but unfortunately, I left myself on top of the hole. Yes, I'm aiming 90 degrees to the left, and it still broke off the face of the planet, leaving myself three feet here that I did not clean up properly, so I missed it and made another bogey. Now we're seven over par, staring at the 18th hole, needing a par just to break 80. And at 652 yards, just a little downhill off the tee, it's probably only going to take about 10 yards total off the hole here. A fairway bunker down the right will come into play off the tee for me, and maybe even the water, it sits about 310 to 315 off the tee. Now there's going to be a scattering of bunkers all the way up this par 5, protecting many shots that many golfers will be taking all the way into this hole. Now from about this spot in, it is back up the hill to the green and it's a multi-tiered green. And once again, the flag is all the way back on top of the last tier and tucked away. Why not? It's been the theme of the day. Let's just put one all the way back again. Now, luckily, we've been playing with that wind all day. The wind was finally at our back again. I could ride this thing all the way down there, flew the fairway bunker on the right to give myself a clear shot into the green here, and I had a nice fluffy lie. So I took out the driver. Why not? It's over 300 yards. Let's see if we can get it up there. I caught it absolutely perfectly and hit it straight into the one pine tree on the fairway. So <laughs> I had 160 yards into the hole and I was able to hit it flag high here. I was actually really, really happy with it. 25 feet for birdie to close out the round. Uh, ultimately, just another comfy tap in par to help us break 80, shooting 79 out here this is a difficult golf course and a very difficult day. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Later.